The recording for episode 3 completely went missing, and I didn't want to leave you guys without the information from this episode, so I spent the first half of this week remembering anything I could, and then writing it into a Google Doc after writing it on paper. Now, on Thursday night, because I've had a busy day, I get to record it and start editing. Tomorrow I have to stream and then edit it some more, because Saturday I have D&D, so I'm not out of the house. And then I have to upload this on Sunday. So I, for me, that's a short deadline. But what I'm doing is I'm making basically what I'm hoping to sound like an audiobook. Now, this is not going to become common practice. I want you guys to know that. I want you guys to have a podcast. I was so worried that when the audio got left out that this was going to be so bad. But then I reminded myself, I want my players to have a good time first. The podcast does come second. So this is entirely for the podcast entirely so i hope you guys enjoy it because my because this was a lot of work and sorry if i misspeak i'm not i'm gonna try and do this in as little takes as possible because if i take any more takes i'm gonna be too tired like my dinner is in the instant pot my rice is being made i think it went off but i just don't have the energy and I basically have to turn everything off in my room. And I hate sitting quiet, so I need to turn on music that isn't picked up by the mic in my earbud. Hopefully it's quiet enough that it won't pick up. So here's your reminder from last session. Last session, the players were coming up out of the sewers where they were met with the military and General Lila, a... Half-elf, half-orc general for the Mortician army with her black hair pulled back in a bun, a tight one, and her dark olive green skin. Dark olive green? Dark olive green. Because it's, it's darker on the green side. And they talked with General Leela about everything going on. General Leela sent them off and then told Balasar about the Harmonian army trying to start using demonic magics and that he needed to gather the team to go check it out. And the team was the adventurers, and they convinced Fan to join them. So that's what happened last session. Let's get started on what I've made. We open with Steve, Lawrence, Pixie, and Balasar sitting up at a table after getting up for the day. When they were sitting there, a magic poofed Lawrence. Steve turned his head to Lawrence's chair to see a note in a small black and white spotted mu mushroom amulet. Picking up the note, he read, Sorry, it's the magic. What just happened? Balasar asked out loud while trying to reach into his brain on what this seemed. To him, it seemed along the lines of what General Laurel does with the teleportation, but slightly different. I think it was teleportation. Quet walks over to their table and starts a conversation. I have a question. Would you all accompany me on an errand? I recently hired a new hand to help me, and she's trained enough to handle it on her own today. What errand? Steve asked. Well, there's a, a cafe down the road, and there's this amazing tiefling the party catches the giant blush on the pale face steve raises his eyebrow i mean why not the party finishes up their meal and they all get ready to go quit calls out to his hire marty can you handle the dishes yeah quit no problem came the reply the party exited the shattered bulb into the busy city with its tall buildings and neon lights forever on. A few streets from the shattered bulb, they found a shop they had passed the day before, with, with a bright pink awning hanging over the street. Hanging off of said awning was a magenta sign with the words Hamlet's Cafe and Chaos painted in neon pink. Big windows line the front and sides of the entire shop. Stepping inside, they see a six foot three tiefling with neon pink skin and neon blue hair that is pulled back into a small, low ponytail. As he worked on his side of the counter, the party sees a neon green tail flick around. 
At the sound of the bell, he turns around where everyone can see his bright red eyes. Quit! Welcome back! Who are your acquaintances? Quit gives a smile. This is Balasaw, Steve, and Pixie, motioning at the party. Oh, and of course, Farron. Farron waves. Well, it's great to meet you all. Is there something I can get you? Balasaw takes a few steps forward, looking at the men him above the tiefling. Yes, I would like a cinnamon roll. Chaotic or normal? Chaotic. The smile on Hamlet's face grows wider. I'll get on that. Hamlet walked into the back. A small halfling woman walks towards the register and pulls a stool so she can see over the counter. Can I help anyone else? Steve strolls over. He looks at the menu himself and sees that bread is only a copper piece each. Uh, can I get ten pieces of bread? She nods and hopped off the counter. They hear her moving, but can't see her under the counter. She comes back holding a small bag full of tiny loaves. Here you go. That'll be ten copper, please. The gold exchanges hands. Steve takes his bread and takes a bite out of one of those loaves. It is light and buttery and seems like it would be good at any temperature with most foods. Reminding him of a ration loaf. Okay, my friend, here is your cinnamon roll. Hamlet returned with a cinnamon roll with some pink glitter on it. That will be two gold. Balsar narrowed his eyes but paid the guy with his two gold. It scarfed it down in a few bites. As Balsar was eating, everyone watched as their scales turned from the coppery golden of their normal to a neon blue. Ah, dang! I thought it would be something more fun! Hamlet looked disappointed at this new observation. Balasar not noticing much about his new appearance. Anyone else want anything? Not knowing his halfling compatriot had helped them. Can I get a cinnamon roll? Steve takes his turn to try the chaos. What flavor? All of them. Really? Hamlet gets so excited. Uh, can I also get a bit of coffee? Pixie asked from on top of Steve's head. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, Steve speaks up before Hamlet leaves. Quit has feelings for you. Hamlet looks him in the eye and says, I know. They're a pretty cool person. He smiles and looks over at Quit, who is now flustered and turning red. Hamlet walks off towards the back to prep that cinnamon roll. Steve, what was that for? What? You weren't going to do it? I was playing the long game, obviously, Quit said while pacing a little. So why'd you bring us? Oh, you weren't. You bring me almost every time. Farron piped up with a small smirk. He was rebuked with a glance from Quit. So you didn't want us here? Pixie questioned. Quit took a step forward and everyone could hear them, even though she was doing her best to just speak to Pixie. No, I just got scared because he's so nice and I get super anxious when I go alone. Pixie nods. Hamos returns with a plate of glitter. Pixie flies over and drops a handful of her own glitter onto the pile. Steve hands the gold to Hamlet and starts to eat it. Everyone watches in anticipation as he starts to choke on the amount of glitter he has ingested. They see a neon pink shield surround him for about a minute as he's choking. And on his empty plate now were five round, squishy marshmallow-like baby dragons. There was a small black one with gray highlights, a light purple one with white highlights, another one with dark sky blue with grass green highlights, and the fourth one with light sky blue with white highlights, and the last one was a pale pink with even paler pink highlights. Cough! Cough harder! Pixie called from the top of Steve's head. After a minute of choking, Steve cleared his airways. He was a little dizzy, but now he had five baby dragons on his head and shoulders. Oh, 
Can we go to Bad Will? It's one of my favorite thrift shops. It's where I got my scarf. It's my favorite and it's so nice. And I thought, since we were going on an adventure soon, why not? Farron starts bouncing a little. The other shrugged as if to say, why not? Quit, would you like to come back for food? Hamlet spoke up. Steve gave a smirk. Hamlet and Quit, sitting in a tree, K.I. Quet rushed behind the counter, pushing Hamlet towards the back, embarrassed by Steve's actions. You guys have fun, bye! My coffee? Pixie called out. Oh, yes, let me get that for you. Hamlet walked, walked into, into the, the back, the back with Quet, where they, where they could, could hear him, him rummaging, rummaging, rummaging and starting, and starting to, make to make the coffee. coffee. Sorry, Sorry that, that took, took so long. long. I, made I made you two because, because I, I, I almost, almost forgot. forgot. He handed, he handed two, two thimbles. thimbles. One, one had a little, little covering, covering the rubber, rubber band, band like, a like a little to-go cup. cup. And the and other, an open, open cup. cup. As if, as if for Pixie, for Pixie to, to drink here, here now. Pixie, Pixie chugs, chugs the, the first coffee as Hamlet disappears. And everyone walks out of the cafe. The caffeine was a lot. And they start and spraying walks glitter, out of the cafe. like their their magic just was a lot. lets glitter they drop everywhere, glitter, including like their Steve's magic hair. just lets hey, glitter Pixie, drop everywhere. Your glitter bag is open. Steve's at hair. this point, Pixie hey, noticed Pixie, the bag was your open. glitter bag is open and closed it. At this point, it slowed the glitter, but the bag was open. Did not stop it and closed it. It Pixie slowed the glitter, but ahead, as they had so much it. energy, Pixie but started flying ahead, they flying, as they had they so much energy. But they had seen as the they first were time they had come they into the city and shop. decided to go by a They had seen it the first time they had come they into the, the city automaton and decided dressed to go in a little corn costume hearing. They passed the automaton dressed in a little corn costume hearing. Come down today and try some corn, or we will sacrifice your newborn. Ah! As they pushed the door open. Hello there! How can I help you? The man with glasses in a corn costume asked. Can I get a keychain? Absolutely! He reached down below his counter and pulled out a box painted with little corn people. Pixie pulled one out and pays the corn man. As they came out, they saw Balasar laying face down on the ground. The little pale pink dragon curled up on their back as Steve stood there, questioning how Balasar had tripped. Pixie flew over and sat on Balasar's back and attached the corn chain to their bag. As they did, they pulled on it, and it started to sing a little jingle. From the earth I'll rise, and to the earth I one day will return. What's up, mother shuckers? My name is Cornel Cornelius Cornwall, and I'm here to introduce you to... Corn! Corn is a North American cereal plant that yields large kernels on a cob. It is also called maize because it's easy get to get lost in its incredible flavor. Side effects of corn may include... Choking. I guess. Come down today and try some corn, or we will sacrifice your newborn. Ah! Steve and Farron started to walk to Badwill, where they saw the giant purple sign for the shop. Farron was messing with a few bracelets on his wrist as the group started getting closer. The dragon and Pixie had come back to their resting spot on Steve's head. Balasar picked himself up, annoyed that he had tripped in the first place. They had spent a while in bad will, each one of them finding a bag of holding for only about four gold each. Balasar found a book called This Chaotic War, and Steve found a shirt saying, Sounds like a bad idea, I'm in. The party headed back to the shattered bulb to spend the rest of the day relaxing. Steve hands the yellow shirt he had bought to Balasar. Balasar took it happily and slipped it over their chainmail. The yellow shirts with the official navy blue and gold of his uniform as it was yellow itself. It smiles happily with their new crop top as it was a size too small for them. When everyone had settled down into what they were wanting to do for the rest of the day, Balasar made an observation. Quet had not returned, so they picked himself back up and headed to the cafe in chaos. When the bell rang again, Balasar was met by the halfling woman from before. If you mean Quet, they went to the library. And Hamless? The library. They went together. She shook her head as if to say that it should have been obvious. Balasar huffed and quickly made his way to the library, having no issues finding the tall, multi-floor building. When he entered the lobby, he saw a green orc man sitting, tapping at a tablet, and sorting a few books. Hello, sir. How may I help you? 
I am looking for a tall, loud tiefling upstairs. Balsar made his way up a couple of floors to finally find the two people sitting across from each other at a table. Ever so often, one would look up and point to a spot in their book leading to a quiet conversation. Balsar started to sneak closer, hoping to check on some of the conversation. As he was moving, some of his chainmail caught against the seam of its new shirt. They did not want the new shirt to be ruined, so he started to struggle to remove it, which meant it started to make noise. Balasaw, can we help you? Quite called out as both of the people looked over. Balasaw froze for maybe a second, and then they were running out of the library. They made their way back to the shattered bulb and into their bedroom. The next day was spent refilling rations and equipment that these adventurers may have used. Well, they were in between towns. Nothing much actually happened today. On their fourth day in town, Balsar woke up and headed out to the military camp and entered General Leela's tent. Good morning, Balasar. Where's your group? I have one. Yes. But they need to be here so I can debrief them on the job. Balsar rolls his eyes and heads back to the tavern quickly, feeling a little held up in a town. He slams the door open to see Steve and Pixie sitting at a table. Guys, meeting, let's go. I had a great night's sleep last night. Farron opens the door and stretches. Let's go, meeting. Excuse me? Farron speaks, walking towards the table. Quet is making pancakes. She only makes those when he's happy. Meeting. Pancakes first. Fine. They both sit down waiting for Quet to bring out the pancakes. Okay. Would you guys like butter or jelly? Maple syrup, corn syrup, or, ja or corn jam? Pixie ordered some plain pancakes. Stephen Balazar ordered some with syrup. And Farron ordered some with corn jam. A very variety breakfast. Steve, thank you for your help the other day. It, mine and Hamas' feelings are mutual, and we are now seeing each other. Although, I don't think I really needed help. That's good, but you really did need my help. Quite, do you know where I might be able to find cornbell soup for my rations? I don't have any here. But if you head down to the Corn Emporium, you can get some. They have a bunch of different things like candies and snacks and those corn bell soups that are great for rations. As soon as Farron was done with his food, Balasar was practically pushing the party all the way to the military camp. Gemma Leela was standing outside her tent when they arrived. They all followed her in, where she crossed across her desk and took her seat. Now, what do you know about the wool? Balsar shrugged. He didn't really care as to why they were fighting. He's just happy he got to fight. Steve didn't know much coming from a shipping town. And Pixie's memories were still fuzzy. They knew this war was affecting their home, but could not remember exact details as to why. General Leela gave a sigh. <sighs> the army of Mortician are run here in the country of Vibra. Its main belief is that magic is for all and can be learned quickly through books and classes to the common folk. The country that is the base of operations for the Harmonian army is Ultithia. They believe magic is a slow learned skill that you must spend years learning from a master and that the learning of magics cannot be rushed. This has led to both kingdoms pulling the majority of the world into a war. What I need you to do is head into Ultithia and find out why our spies have stopped sending information from their posts in Untether. Before they went radio silent, we were told that the Harmonian army is working to incorporate demonic magics into their tactic. So that is the information you need to gather. What type and how they are integrating it. You have six months to get there, get the information, and return the information. People move slower, information moves slower. Any questions? Everyone looked around. Farron opened his mouth and then stopped. Steve, translate for me. Steve nods at this request. Why fight over magic when magic is good? Everyone should have magic and no fight over magic. Why are we fighting over magic when it's a lot easier just to let everyone use the magics? It is not for you to know. 
She knows jack shit. Like, the people above her have probably not actually explained their reason as to the war. Which does not put a lot of hope into them. If there is nothing else, you all dismissed. The party walks out and decides that they should head to the train station, ride it to the coast, and get off from there. On the train, Balasaur, Pixie, and Farron take seats in the front cart. Pixie... Pixie gets a seat all to themselves with the four little baby dragons. The fifth one hangs out on the shoulder of Steve. Although, Pixie does hear some gossip behind them. Did General Balasaur have children? Balasaur had clocked out at this point and did not hear the gossip behind him. Seeing his new friend settle down, Steve takes one of the baby dragons, the pale pink one to be specific, then takes a walk down the carts, observing for a target. A few carts down, he sees a lady with her dark umber brown skin with forest green eyes scanning a book. He takes the seat across from her. She looks up from her book and talks. Oh, hello there. Hi, I'm Steve and you, he asks, putting out his hand. Alina Malzapan. What has you on the train today? She shook his hand. Oh, just headed to the coast. Oh, that is so interesting. Did you have a fun time in the city? Yes, yes, uh... I did, I mean, I got some baby dragons, he says, showing the dragon on her shoulder. Oh, how did that happen? Well, there was this cafe and the cinnamon rolls that had magic. Down at, like, this cafe with this tiefling guy. Oh, you... Oh, you mean that cafe? Oh, I've seen it a few times while I'm in town, but I haven't had the chance to stop. I, I've been down there because my cousin, Charles, runs the Corn Emporium. I'm surprised. I, it just means I need to stop by next time. Oh, so you've been into the city before? Of course. I'm always in the city. I mean, my cousin, Charles, like I said before, runs the Corn Emporium. And he's part of the Cornsicle family, and if you didn't know, the the Cornsicle family is in charge of the import for this here city. As they conversate about the chronicles of the family and Steve's adventures in the town, Steve slips a small bag from her hip, which had a few small gems and a corn chain. And that was where we ended the session. So next week, we will be using a different audio editor, so hopefully things won't be as bad. Um, if you're listening to this, thank you for surviving. I'm the type of person who, if the podcast isn't there all the way, then I will just quit it because it bothers me. So if you've listened through this, I appreciate it so much. Like, amazingly. This is now, so I'm not going to say anything about anything else. Well, I mean, what I want to say is different than what I'm going to say. But again, thank you for surviving all this through. I hope it was as decent as I hoped it was. I should stop saying decent. I should say it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, go check out the Instagram at Bees in the Forest, as well as my side account on Instagram, because on Instagram... I don't remember which one I post my art to, and if you want official art and official sketches of characters, for example, I did a few sketches of El Elena Marzipan uh, while practicing skin tones. Don't love the sketches of her, but I think I will be posting those when this episode comes out. Uh, check out my Tumblr for the rambles of a crazed DM as I struggle to figure out what my players need to do next session. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe and hit that like button and share to those friends. And if you're listening on Apple, hit those five stars and give us a wholesome comment. And if it's cool enough, I may add it into the end of the next, ep of the next episode. I mean, who am I to say? Uh, and just in case I add music into this, I don't think I will. Um... All but the short guitar is done by Nathan Hanover. The guitar is done by me, but all of the music throughout it is by Nathan Hanover. Thank you again for listening. Bye.